All right, so if you are interested in getting into the Leathercraft journey in any way, this is the video for you. So we now have over 220,000 followers on TikTok, which is just absolutely absurd. And it's crazy, thank you guys so much. But one of the questions that I get asked the most is about my tools and some of the tools that are needed to get into the Leathercraft. So instead of taking the time to go over that on all of my live streams and on our TikTok, I decided I would go ahead and put a video together to try to help you guys get a better understanding of some of the tools that are going to be necessary for you to get started in Leathercraft. So one important thing to note is that the style and the craft of every creator is going to be different. It's going to vary from, from person to person. So this is going to be very much geared towards my personal preferences and the things that we make, which is wallets and smaller goods and accessories like that. One other thing that I would like to mention before we get started is I remember early on looking at all the different videos and, and checking out all the different tools. There's so many options. It can be super overwhelming to, to hear all this and to to try to figure it all out, but you gotta start somewhere. So I'm gonna try to do my best to give you guys some tips and advice, show you kind of what I started with, you know, give you some cheaper options, but also, you know, tell you some of the tools that have been really helpful for me and what's been worked for me thus far. Um, but it's gonna be different for everybody. You just gotta know that up front and you, you gotta start somewhere. So don't let, you know, all of the information overwhelm you and, and stop you from getting started in your journey. With that being said, with all the tools that I have and know where to find, I'm gonna link them in the description below. All right, let's get into it. So the first thing I wanna talk about is some of our knives. So the first thing that you're gonna need is probably a, like a smaller X-Acto knife. This isn't a great example. This is just like a basic utility box cutter. Um, but an X-Acto knife uh, is something you can get pretty cheap online and it's just gonna be good for you to make small precise cuts. The problem with some of the cheaper uh, X-Acto knives or like a box cutter or something like that is you need something that's really sturdy so that you can put some pressure on and, and make a good cut whatever type of cut it is, whether it's a round cut or you're just doing a straight line. The problem with this box cutter is the blade isn't very sturdy. The knife that I use and highly recommend and that is pretty popular in the Leathercraft world is this Lynn Dispensable knife. It's got a brass handle and it's made out of some high quality steel and it does a, a really good job. It's very sturdy so you can put a lot of pressure on it and still get a really good cut. The trick with the Lynn Dispensable knife if you go to, to look at it is if you're right-handed, you're actually gonna to wanna to get the left-handed one. And that's because the, the straight part of the blade is gonna be on the left side. So when you're making cuts, you're gonna want the, the, the straight blade instead of this curved edge on the left side. So if you're right-handed, you want a left-handed blade. If you're left-handed, you want a right-handed blade. That's what some of the best advice I ever got before getting that. But a knife, very important. The next kind of knife that I use more than, I, than probably any tool that I have is my rotary knife. Get it off of Amazon, super basic, super cheap, but they are amazing. I use this for most of my cuts. You know, when I'm cutting out my wallets um, out of the hide or when I'm doing trim allowance or any cut like that, I'm, I most always use my, my rotary blade. So this is awesome. You can get replaceable blades to, to keep them sharp or you can sharpen them however you like, but Rotary knife is definitely something you want to look into getting. And this is, I, I just use the cheap one. It's a great option and it's what I've always used. The next thing is a Japanese knife. These are, are really nice. Uh, I actually have my old one here that I used for years that I got off Amazon. Just a super basic, cheap Japanese knife. And um, it's really good for making, you know, more precise straight cuts where there might be like a, a corner you got to get into or, or just different angles that this is gonna be good for, which you'll find out once you start making. This is one of the, the cheap ones that I use very early on, and it's good, but you'll learn very quickly, kind of even with, with the Lynn Dispensable blade, the, the better material that, uh, that is used, or the more sharp uh, it'll be, just the higher quality it's gonna be overall. So I actually use a Palo Santo Japanese knife. So you'll see as we go, I have more Palo Santo stuff. They just make really, really high quality, handmade tools that are super precise and just uh, really awesome. It's, it's obviously a bit pricier, but as you go, you'll learn that you get what you pay for. And these pricier tools make a big difference in the quality of your goods. Not always, 
like for instance, the rotary blade, obviously I use a, a cheap rotary blade, but there are things that you're gonna learn. More money you spend, you're gonna get better quality and it's gonna in turn make for a better product. All right, so quick little shameless plug. If this video has been good for you at all, please go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Or maybe you just think all oh, this is super goofy and you wanna help out anyways. I really do appreciate it and it means a lot and it helps a lot. So thank you guys, much love. So obviously we're doing a lot of cutting. We're working with sharp edges. Something you need, it's necessary, is a nice cutting mat. There's all kinds of different cutting mats. I have these little square grid mats, smaller. Um, 18 by 24 inch mats. You can get bigger ones, you can get smaller ones, but it's necessary. Uh, on top of that, you're doing a lot of punching. Uh, I believe it's called a poundo board, uh, but you're gonna need a poundo board. You're gonna be using your punches and, and different um, you know, corner edge punches and things like that. And it's very important, obviously, that you have something to protect your blades. So these are gonna be the, the most important part in protecting your blades and allowing you to do your work. You're gonna need a nice maul. So as I mentioned before, you're gonna be doing a lot of punching, punching holes. You're gonna be you know, punching your pricking irons. So a, a good maul is gonna be very important. Um, this is just one that I got out of my dad's garage back when I started. It's just a, a bigger rubber mallet. And what's important is a little bit of weight up at the head so that you're not having to put a lot of force into your punches. Um, also, you, know, you want it to be rubber. You're gonna be working with, with steel punches so you don't want to have a hammer you know steel on steel it's not going to be uh, very efficient so a nice you know rubber mallet rubber maul whatever it's going to be super important um, in the long run you're just getting started so you're probably going to be hand sewing your products you're going to need a good set of pricking irons or hole punches these are going to be what you use to punch the holes around the edges of your wallet to sew up your wallets. I don't have the old ones that I used to use, but I just bought um, you know, a pretty standard um, pricking iron off of Amazon, and that's what I used for a little bit. But I realized very early on, you don't want to go cheap in these because you're going to get oh, cheap metal pricking irons that aren't going to line up super straight, and it's also you know, they don't make um, a nice hole, so it, it's really hard to get your stitch through the holes. So very quickly, I upgraded to a nicer um, pricking iron. Uh, I got, I had the center box and it made the biggest difference in my work early on. So I would high, highly suggest it. So do your research on these. I use the center box. I actually upgraded to the hole punches. I like the look of the hole punches better than the pricking irons. It's gonna be totally a preference thing. You're gonna need you know, probably a longer, you know, four to five hole punch, and then you're gonna need a, a two hole punch to get around your corners and such. Um, same with the pricking iron. So these are, are really important. I, I really suggest getting a high quality punch early on. It's gonna make a big difference in your work, but you don't need it to start. So get something cheap, figure it out, and um, do what you have to do to get started, and then kind of figure out as you go what you wanna get, pricking iron, hole punches, do some research. Do what's best for you. So there's gonna be a few tools that you can look into getting to make a nice straight stitch line around the edge of your wallet. We use what is called a wing divider, and these are really awesome. It just allows you basically to go down the edge of your wallet and create a nice line offset from your edge around the edge of your wallet so that you can punch a really clean, straight line. And uh, these are great little uh, cheap tools. I have a couple of them that are set at different uh, widths so that I don't have to change them all the time. But a wing divider, these are really great to create a nice, clean stitch line. So you've punched your holes in your wallet. Now you're going you're gonna to need to stitch it up. So you're going to need yourself a saddle pony. This is the first one that I got, basic one off of Amazon. You literally just use uh, this piece to, to sit on, and then it allows you to you know, clamp down your wallet and grip your wallet so that you can uh, sew it up. It's a great little device. I used it for a little bit, but over time I obviously upgraded. I now have this Dream Factory Saddle Pony that is more of a clamp style, allows you to clamp it to the uh, edge of, of a surface. So I have it um, clamped here to the edge of my workbench um, in a spot that's convenient for me. And it's great because I have it at a, a good height so that I don't have to lean over my work to, to, to sew up my goods. I'm taking it off here, you can see. Anyways, you see here how it works. It clamps to the edge of the surface and then you can um, tighten it and loosen it to get it at a different angle. 
Um, and then you have your knob over here to uh, loosen and tighten the clamp around your wallet. So this is a great little investment, uh, makes a big difference, whatever works for you. So up next is the edge beveler. Edge bevelers are awesome. It's one of the most satisfying parts of working with leather. When you're working with a, a raw edge of a wallet, the corners of the leather are going to be sharp and kind of pointy. So what an edge beveler does, is it goes down the side of the wallet and it cuts off that sharp edge and it helps round the edge, which in turn is a small detail, but gives a really nice feel to the wallet. And I think if you didn't bevel the edges of your wallets, you would notice a big difference and it would almost feel like an unfinished product. So edge bevelers, really nice. There are different sizes. There's bigger ones and there's more fine, smaller ones. What I've noticed that I had early on this Craft Tool Pro Zero, and it's a bit bigger. And so for smaller, more fine wallets, you're going to want something uh, a little bit more precise. You know, with these bigger ones, you're going to go along the edges and it's going to be wavy and it's going to be taking out big chunks of the wallet. I actually got a Palo Santo edge beveler and I use a size one and it's really small. It's the perfect size for wallets and it just creates this really nice, even, smooth, cut along the edge of the wallet and you don't have any problems with getting a wavy cut or cutting too deep into the edge. And it just is really, really nice. These things are super sharp. Once again, Palo Santo, they make these by hand. They're awesome. You cannot beat the quality of these. With all the other tools, there's some other people who make some nice edge bevelers, but Palo Santo makes a really good one. I also have the size two. I use that for like belts and such, but it's a lot bigger. And I think the one is, is really good for wallets. Sticking to the Palo Santo hype, Another awesome tool is a French Skyver. I have a Palo Santo French Skyver, the size 12. For the first year of my business, I used a very cheap, tandy French Skyver. And the, the point of this tool is basically to shave off the flesh side of the leather. So, you know, when you're stacking wallets together, after so many layers, you know, it starts to, to get pretty thick. So what you can do is you can go into some of your inside pockets and use the French Skyver to cut off some of that extra excess leather, which in turn thins your wallet out. And it's just one of those small details that kind of just goes a long way and helps out in making a nice probably quality So the French Skyver, you, it's another one of the, you know, most satisfying things that you'll see in our videos when we're, you know, slicing off that leather. So the cheap one that I used for the first year of making wallets, it did the job, but it was just kind of a pain. It's not very wide. It's um, pretty small width and the, the steel or metal, whatever it is, uh, just was hard to keep sharp. And it was just kind of a pain in the butt. When I upgraded to the Palo Santo, it was like cutting butter. It is amazing. Uh, it's little things like that with the Palo Santo that go such a long way. It makes such a big difference. Very happy with this investment. And uh, I think you will be too. So I've got a couple things here that I probably use every single day as much as anything else that I use. And it's for the edges of any of our goods. And it is token all and uh, a wood burnisher. So both of these together make for an amazing edge. So the token all is a leather edge finish. You'll see different kinds of leather edge finish out there, but the most highly recommended in the leather craft world is token all by far. I've tried the other ones and token all is just, a, it's really amazing. It's a cream that goes along the edge of your raw finished wallet. And what it does is it kind of helps with laying down the fibers of the wallet and giving it a smooth, glossy, nice feel for an edge. On top of that, you've got your wood burnisher. So after you apply the token all to the edge, you take this little piece and you just go along and you, you create friction along the edge of the wallet. And all that does is basically lays down the raw fibers of the, the wallet and it creates a nice, smooth, slick edge. And when you pair that up with token all, you really can't beat it. It's really good for vegetable tan leathers. Um, you can make a really, really sleek, nice looking edge. It's not necessary, but it's one of those small details that a lot of makers like to use to finish their products and to set themselves apart from the rest. So surprisingly, something I get asked about the most is actually the glue that we use. And I always highly, highly recommend the glue that we use. I love it. It has been amazing for me. I've tried a couple other things and I won't use anything else. And that is this EcoFlow Leather Weld. It's a, a water-based adhesive 
So um, it's not super messy. It doesn't have a strong smell or anything like that. And what's so nice about it is sometimes you'll see people using glues that they'll have to, you know, use like a, a hair dryer or something or heat or they'll have to wait to let it dry. Whereas this stuff, it dries pretty quickly. So I usually don't, that's not an issue. I, I really love it. We actually, you know, in our videos and stuff, you'll see um, these little bottles, this little glue applicator that I use. Um, I get this the same place that I do my little glue, plastic glue spreader from District Leather Supply. These are really nice in terms of applying and working with, with my glue on our wallets. They great little uh, a duo tag team here. Here's a quick one, little scratch all. These things are really nice. Good to just get little, you know, precise markings on your wallet, whether you're tracing out one of your designs or making a little mark, you know, to where your edge is gonna meet up with another edge. This is one of those tools where I've, you know, spent more money on a nicer one. No point uh, that I've found, you know, I, I got this little guy, a pack of three on Amazon and it's all I use. So scratch all, they're really nice, good for making little precise marks. Definitely something that you can use on your journey. I think that's it in terms of, you know, everything that you're going to need to get started in the leathercraft world. That's really, for the most part, everything that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm sure there's some other small things that uh, didn't make the cut. But yeah, uh, I hope that I was able to kind of give you a good mix of uh, the stuff that I use and just maybe some other like cheap options. And something that I always say on our live streams is you get what you pay for. And I think that really holds true in terms of the value you're gonna get out of your tools. The, the more you spend in your tools, the higher quality your product is gonna be. Obviously early on, you don't need to spend thousands of dollars on all your tools. Eventually, if you go down the road of upgrading every one of your tools to a nicer quality tool, it might cost thousands of dollars. But early on, you can spend the minimum on getting what you need. You know, I got online, I ordered a starter kit on Amazon and I just started making wallets. And then, you know, as I went, I upgraded what I thought I needed to upgrade one at a time. Not everybody wants to do it that way. Some people might just want to go ahead and invest in the best at the start. And if you got the money, that's a great idea. It might save you some time. Um, and I hope, you know, some of my recommendations will help you there, but you don't need that. You can get everything you need off Amazon. Like I said, I'm going to be linking down below the websites or the places that you can get uh, most of the stuff that I have here. And yeah, I hope that was helpful for you guys. This is my first video. So I'm you know, trying to figure this whole thing out, this YouTube thing. I appreciate you guys being here. So yeah, it would mean a lot if you guys, you know, could subscribe to the channel and like this video if it uh, was of good value for you. And if you'd like to see more content in the future, also leave me a comment. Let me know if you guys have other questions or if you have other ideas for future videos. That would be awesome. I appreciate you guys, love you guys. And if you ever wanna hang out, we're always live on TikTok. Follow us on Instagram. That's a uh, easy way to keep up with everything that we're doing. Peace out. Thank mm -hmm. you.